sweet baby ink. Uh, let me see if I can find... I don't want to do an Asmund's video because I feel like he does a good job at reacting at it on its own. Uh, but I'd like to know what video he was reacting to. By Endymion. Okay. So he's reacting to Endymion. It's from nine days ago, five days ago. Actually, let me just click on. There we go. What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and there's been an explosion of information circulating all over Twitter and other places when it comes to the sweet, stinky, putrid baby and their stain upon the masses of video games. I figured for now we'd be good, there couldn't possibly be more. But like Goku achieving new levels of Super Saiyan, this story keeps getting more powerful and insane as time goes on. Now it turns out we may have found a connection to Sweet Baby's Inception and it connects in a really bizarre way that you need to see in order to believe. Beyond this, the founder of the baby has been found to call white male players as picky babies. And Suicide Squad, which has obviously failed and imploded in front of Warner Bros. Discovery's eyes, has... Now, now if I remember correctly... Um... Oh, wrong one. There we go. Now, if I remember correctly, Sweet Baby is a consulting firm that that gaming companies are using so it arit so this whole thing blew up because somebody made a tracker on Steam Actually, here it is. So somebody made a, a tracker on Steam that in, that would display games that were that Sweet Baby Inc. had sort of consulted on and there's, I think, some good games in here, maybe, but there are some bad ones also. Basically, Ghostwrite? No. Um. So, they they basically did, like, direct... What, what do you mean by consulting? I mean, as, as far as, like, consulting is in, like, to give suggestion or advice on... On a certain topic or uh, problem at hand, that's that's the basis for consulting, and they can sort of. And obviously, the 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 gaming people that are coming in and that are asking for this advice are basically using using their consultation and changing the things to fit a more. Uh, in I don't want to use their words, but to have proper representation in the in their games and stuff like that, they uh, so they give specialized info. Yeah, I, I don't want to use their terms because I I don't know if they're using their terms correctly either. But basically, yeah, they're just giving advice on like what to put into their into their games and stuff like that. So now. Somebody made a tracker on Steam, which is perfectly legal, on um, just specifically putting a spotlight on Sweet Baby Games' involvement in these games. Well, uh, Sweet Baby ended up um, taking that as a call to violence against them because people are perceiving 
them as the the fault or why the games aren't good. So they are basically uh, trying to make this person take down this tracker and stuff like that. Um, and that's the gist of what I know. Maybe the video that we're about to watch is going to go more into detail on this, but from some of the posts on X, formerly known as Twitter, have been don't make the don't make the consulting firm look good. As he mentioned in the in the video like a couple of minutes ago about basically insulting white people, which not for if he shows if he shows a post of the of the video like because I cause let, let me preface I don't. I don't like that stuff. I don't like insulting people based off of the color of their skin or whatever, which I think everybody here can is on my side on that. I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but yeah, it's a little weird. If you know what I mean? Um, decided that not only are players wrong, but suicide squad is Warner's future. It's a lot, so let's keep this simple to begin with. Those weird connections and how this may have all... Also, I knew Suicide Squad was going to be crap from the moment that it was shown at like E3 and all that stuff. So, and I, and maybe it's just me, but like, I don't think any of these games that I've seen so far have actually looked good or appealing for where I want to watch, like want to either play them or watch them. So maybe the, maybe they're coming to sweet baby with just bad games in general. And then people are just using sweet baby as the scapegoat. Like there's there's multiple factors in this in this little controversy that is like at play right now and I, i'm gonna look, watch his video and i'm gonna see if there's anybody else that is covering it in a different light but yeah started so far what we know for sure is that sweet baby inc was founded in 2018 by kim belair and it's a consulting company that was created to boost marginalized voices within video games through narrative, script dialogue, quest design, and much more. Sometimes it's more of a subtle endeavor, and sometimes it sticks out like a sore thumb. Like having a black girl in God of War Ragnarok who's apparently from a race of giants. That originates from Norse mythology within a very white part of the world. As in every single Norse... See, that's kind of weird. In retrospect, um, villain within Ragnarok is white, every citizen is white, and even Atreus, whose mother is a giant, is also white. But randomly, for no reason at all, there just happens to be a black girl in this same giant race. Of course, it was done for representational purposes and likely was pushed by Sweet Baby from the get go in order to ensure there was some diversity in the game. But we I'm just gonna put out there that that is speculative. We actually don't know if they told them to do that or if it or if they just had put that in there of their own volition, like the, the gaming studio. Right. And I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. Like we, we, we actually don't know if Sweet Baby suggested them to put in in there. There's already eight characters. What do they mean? Um, in which in which case? Cause yeah, there are gay characters in gaming. That that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that it's woke or whatever. Like there there's there's been gay characters in gaming. There have been black characters in gaming. There have been all sorts of an array of people in in the video game industry. If that's what you're if that's what you're trying to to convey. So it's not inherently the two shopkeepers in one of the God of War games. Oh, you mean the the two dwarfs in the first one? They were brothers. Yeah, they're brothers. They had a, a falling out because of how uh, Thor was using Mjolnir, and they sort of separated, broke broke their 
the their their um their brand and and all that because of I'm not gonna speculate, but yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a part of Norse the part of the Norse lore as far as I'm aware. Um that the brothers did have a falling out. But no, I'm not against representation. I just saying being historically accurate. Yes, exactly. We all know that if God of War was, for example, in the future, having a game based on African mythology, that they would absolutely not make any of that mythology or its characters randomly into a white person, because that would be culturally tone deaf exactly. and racist to do so. But it's totally fine if it's done within a Norse mythological setting, just ignore the fact that Norse mythology is intrinsically connected to Norwegian people who are predominantly blue-eyed and blonde hair. Don't use logic or reasoning to understand this. Just shut your mouth and consume product like a good consumer instead. Okay, he's being very, like, handy, heavy-handed with this. But he is... But the, the base of his... Base of his point is true. Um, but yeah, the, the crux of his... The crux of his point in this segment of the video is... I, I feel is completely correct. And I feel like... If if the shoe was on the other foot in this scenario where he brought up if the if the God of War series went to Africa and they had other characters that were not perceived as like indigenous to the culture or to the area like e like say Egypt if there's like characters that are white people would get their pitchforks and torches and all that stuff like and be like how dare you sully the, the historical accuracy of of the Egyptian mythology of the Egyptian culture and the mythology and then but on the other hand they'll do this in God of War so which is the crux of what his argument because that's what these consultant groups want us all to do anyway Sweet Baby has obviously left their stink all over the gaming industry already, but now it gets way weirder than before. Ever wonder how a company like Sweet Baby even comes to exist in the first place? And who else is a part of this company? How do these things even come to be? Well, let's take a journey together, friends, and let's go learn how the sausage gets made, shall okay. we? Okay. So since this huge story has been blowing up... I'm actually curious to see where this is, where this is probably going to go now. People have been digging all over, and one of the discoveries is another company with an equally weird name in the form of Baby Ghosts. According to its website, oh. Baby Ghosts is a grant and peer accelerator company that helps marginalized individuals create their studios into a reality. They further explain what they do in their own words here, which says... Baby Ghosts and Gamma Space Collaborative Studio have teamed up to offer a grant of $25,000 in a two-part six-month program of tailored mentorship with a community of game-making peers. We offer the space and the tools to develop a studio that doesn't need to adhere to inequitable systematic norms. Sa okay, this is... N I did not know about this, so hold on, let me... Uh... Doesn't need to adhere to the inequitable system norms. Hold on. Unfair or unjust is inequitable. I'm just, I'm just putting this out there just so I'm aware of the term what term they're trying to go for discriminatory okay unequal one-sided okay to adhere to an unfair systematic norm I, hmm, I don't know that I agree with the majority of this up until it gets to this where it starts using weird lingo tools to develop a studio that doesn't need to adhere to inequitable systematic norms. Sounds nice and simple enough so far, right? What other services do they give? You may be asking. 
Well, according to them, they offer things like helping you with team development, project management, publicity, and professional connections. That okay. last one, by the way, is very, very important. And as they say, the more they engage with you, the more they can support you. But what this really means is they're the more trying they to, get to know you as a game developer, say and if you have the right credentials, be more as a diverse in a simple terms. Color, you identify yourself using other buzz terms like maybe disabled or they them pronouns and so on. Then this baby ghost consulting team will then learn, oh, you're one of the good ones, a sweet baby, if you will. And then they'll use their connections to get other like-minded individuals to help and maybe even work with you on your game who also identify with similar buzz term words as well. And if you want that $25,000 grant to help you achieve your dreams, you kind of have to also be able to identify within these other labels as well. Firstly, you have to be... Okay, he's... Okay, he's definitely trying to put something in there. Oh, let me re let me re-listen to this. Jewels to help and maybe even work with you on your game who also identify with similar buzz term words as well. Okay, so he's basically trying to imply that like if the team identifies with these with the things that are aligning with the with the with the program they would get preferential treatment and get put ahead of the other developing teams that's i think that's what he's trying to actually say i think that's actually what he's in a roundabout way i think that's actually what he's trying to say and if that and if and if the scenario that he's going down is is that then it kind of it becomes counterintuitive to their mission statement Right. Of actually helping groups that are trying to get themselves established as. I think that's what he's actually trying to say. Does that make sense? I don't want to like. Okay. And if you want that $25,000 grant to help. Yeah. And there, and how he's putting it is, is like, Hey, look, there's this, we're going to dangle this reward. If you, if we feel like you match up with what we're trying to do, I think, I think that's actually what he's trying to imply, which by the way, is hearsay and conjecture on his part. This is just him trying to frame out the argument. This is, this is the framing of his argument. If you achieve your dreams, you kind of have to also be able to identify within these other labels as well. Firstly, you have to be Canadian, so sorry Americans, but it's that second point which says, you are a member of an unrepresented group in the video game industry. So, if you're a white yeah. federal male, okay. sorry, you are not eligible for this grant. What's that? You were born a white male against your own will? Have you ever considered that maybe your parents are racist for simply existing? Well, too bad white hetero- Okay, that- is just him throwing that in there as like as like shock value male game developer be gone with you your kind isn't allowed here in these parts but if you're a person of color or pander in any way shape or form well well congratulations you just got accepted into the baby ghost program but then it gets weirder because it turns out that baby ghost is actually funded by another company which is called weird ghosts a lot of bizarre names for these companies I know. So, what's Weird Ghost, you may be asking? Well, according to their website, Weird Ghost is an impact fund for studios led by underrepresented founders across Canada. We support video game studios with studio development training, catalytic investments, and community in order to build strong, impactful teams of underrepresented makers who are shaping the future of video games. So Weird Ghost is a bigger company that through other shell companies like Baby Ghosts use their influence to help what they call underrepresented groups begin working in video games. The site even says in their own words that Weird Ghosts invest in founders who want to build profitable, impact-oriented studios with a profitable, impact-oriented studios. I'm going to let him cook. I'm, I'm going to let him cook. Commitment to equitable worker centric structures. There's that keyword there, by the way, impact. They want whatever it is you're making to change how things are done. That. Okay. That actually makes sense. So basically this, like the, these, this trifecta of like weird groups are in like this weird 
incestuous relationship with each other and they're trying to artificially create an impact in the industry that makes people want to create more of what is causing the impact i think that's what he's going with do do i think he's right probably not but that does track with changing of the social norms it's like trying to actually you know make it appear as though there is um what's the um um supply and demand right so if you create a uh a, a false supply sorry i had it reverse so they're trying to artificially create a demand and they're trying to m make the industry supply that demand that's i think that's a roundabout of what he's actually trying to say with this and that tracks that, that's a that's a thing that can happen because that's how that's how people operate like if you're if people are wanting wanting something they have a demand for it and if there's a demand for it the companies will try to facilitate the demand by creating the supply does that make sense i'm trying to break this down as fat as, as well as i can and maybe he will like go into that that's the key initiative here Whatever it is you're making to change how things are done that's the key initiative here and what i want you to zero in as we go along so it's not enough that you're from an underrepresented group or that you go by whatever pronouns that you do but you also need to be politically and socially aligned with these ghost companies in order to receive your grant. Then you are overseeing. And that is, and that goes back into the eligibility thing that they were talking about in here. So I was at six or six. And, and that's this. right yeah let me let me people can actually see it although the bottom one is really hard to read on here it says willingness to be in community is the very bottom one that's not being visible when i when i enlarge it to receive your grant then you are overseen by these groups to ensure that what you're making is pushing what they want to see. Okay, very cool. So then you're probably asking, who the hell is controlling these companies then? Who are the people behind this? Well, one of them is this person. Yeah, there, there has to be a money trail, right? Like, where, where are these groups actually getting the money in order to actually, like, fund these endeavors? I think... And I don't, and I, I definitely don't want to be conspiratorial on this, but I do want to know where this is actually going. Named Jenny Robinson Faber, who according to their bio on the Weird Ghost website says, Jenny, she is a queer white settler community arts advocate and organizer. Software. Wow. Uh, okay developer and leader in the IDM industry for over 15 years. She co-founded the video games arts nonprofits DMG Toronto with Cecily Carvey and Alex Litch and Gamma Space Collaborative Studio with Henry Faber and Dan Tolivier. In 2015, she joined the board of the Toronto Media Arts Centre and became its operations director in 2017. Yeah, you read that right, fellas. They unironically refer to themselves as white settlers in their public professional biography. You can smell the white liberal woman guilt from here, but surely that is a one and done <laughs> expression, right? Well, who's the other founder? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Their name is- I will admit that is kind of weird if you ask me. <laughs> Eileen Mary Holoka, who according to their bio, Eileen, they, she is a queer and disabled white settler living on Treaty 1 territory in Winnipeg. They are a writer, game dev, and community organizer advocate with a background in theater, games, poetry, and health communications. 
They have a PhD in communication studies from Concordia University and have published extensively within and outside of academia. They are Hmm. Co-founder of both Weird Ghosts and Baby Ghosts. Interesting. A co-founder of both Weird Ghosts and Baby Ghosts with Jenny Robinson Faber. As well as a member of Gamma Space Collaborative Studio, they have also worked as the general manager of Infinite Ammo. Oh, so the White Settler bio description isn't just a one and done sort of thing. You could almost say that it's a mandatory identification term that's designed to easily triangulate and point out who the white people are amidst the crowd here, which is just wow, dude. Wow. The inner hatred. I can't. I can't even, I can't even like really debunk that. Like that does feel like it's a really weird, like why would you put something in there like that? It's almost like it's, it's almost like it's a weird, like, like you said, a weird identifier to like, to for people to like want to target those people specifically for hiring and doing business because ironically like if you took out the very first sent the very first sentence of both of those you would probably be like okay cool this person seems chill nice they have a they have a picture of themselves in their bio like that you know what i mean like it it seems a little overboard i can't like I can't even devil's advocate that because it it just feels it feels like it's too on the nose. Rate of white liberal women is truly one of the greatest jokes of the modern era. These are the sort of people who likely think it's great that people burn down cities in protest. They're likely also the same kinds of people who would get mugged in broad daylight and refuse to give a description. Like it, it's definitely one of those things that like you really wouldn't think otherwise until somebody pointed points it out that that's part of it it's just like if somebody hadn't pointed that stuff out i probably would have just completely overlooked it the person in fear of being racist also find it very interesting that weird and baby ghosts both work to prop up marginalized voices within the gaming industry and refuse to work with white people in general yet unironically these companies are controlled but we, we, we don't know that we, we don't, we, we don't, that's conjecture. Like that's unless we have like anecdotal proof that they're not actually working with businesses that are exclusively like you have to, you also have to understand, like there aren't that many like game devs in Canada that aren't white because the vast majority of people in Canada are white. Um, now there are individuals from other company or not companies, individuals from other countries that live in, uh, that live in Canada. I've, I've met individuals from Canada that are Asian Indian, Indian being like from the country, not like native American. Um, so I'm not, but in terms of like being a part of the industry as a whole, like, yeah, it's mostly, it's mostly white folk. Now I think in the animation field, like there are mo definitely more, it's def there's definitely more variety. There's more diverse. If you're quoting those terms. and created by two white people themselves. It's like the ultimate white savior complex of a company come to life. It's truly incredible how much these people hate something that they can't change about themselves. Imagine referring to yourself as a white settler dude. Holy crap, you can't make this stuff up. It's because of people like this that we're in this mess to begin with, but I don't know if you caught what was said there, so let's circle back for a second. What was the name of that second founder? And definitely, definitely, like, if anybody can, give me a video that is actually, like, at odds or in opposition to this one. Because I, I would like to react to that one as well.
Eileen Holoka. Huh, Holoka, where have we heard that name before? Also, Eileen is in control of another company called Infinite Ammo. What the hell is that? Well, if you go look that up, it turns out Infinite Ammo was started by a man named Alec Holoka. And if you look deeper, you then realize that the man who started Infinite Ammo is actually okay. the same Alec Holoka who ended their life after Zoe Quinn accused them of abuse without any proof. The same Alec Holoka who ended himself after websites like Polygon and others blasted and ruined his reputation and name because of the whole Believe All Women narrative. And then, once he died, oh. his company, Infinite Ammo, was absorbed by his sister Eileen and using all of these connections was able to create weird and baby ghosts. So the man who died because of the baseless accusations of Zoe Quinn, who is pretty much the progenitor of Gamergate, is having his legacy used to fund and create startup companies that politically and commercially erase people like him from the industry, all in the name of virtue signaling. Oh, this is some Jack Reacher level connection. Whoa. I feel like I'm going to be sniped through my window by a they them assassin just for talking about this stuff. But there it is, fellas, right in front of you. The progenitors of Sweet Baby and the transformation of the video games industry is intrinsically tied directly to the very same man whose death was caused by Gamergate itself. Then Sile, who also does YouTube, ended up posting some screenshots on Twitter, so let's go look at those now. And if you look here, well, well, look who it is. It's Chris Kendred who said, So glad to be a part of this cohort. That's right, the narrative designer at Sweet Baby is tied to Weird Ghost as well. And oh look, it's even the same Baby Ghost icon there in the same infographic where Weird Ghost celebrates the seven studios they helped launch. And one of them is there as plain as day, Sweet Whoa. Baby. Then Weird Ghost was founded saying in public that their mission is to remake the industry. And there's another image where Infinite Ammo, which is again created by the now deceased Alec Holoka, is the minority investor in startups like Weird and Baby Ghost, which is now, as you know, the reason why Sweet Baby Inc. exists to begin with. So they're not only politically aligned, they are quite literally, down to their DNA, the same thing. Sweet Baby Inc. Okay, that, that is actually a weird set of coincidences, actually. That was a lot. Yeah, that, that escalated so quickly. Whoa. I was not expecting this when I clicked on this video. Holy crap. Okay. Um, that's so ba so basically all of the same so literally they're just all in the same group right Hold on i actually want to go back and double check what i was reading earlier So, co-founder of Weird Ghosts and Baby Ghosts, general manager, yeah, general manager of Infinite Ammo, a member of Collaborative Studio, and who was the other? This was the first person. Okay. Um... I actually need to zoom out because I can't read all of this. Okay. Oh, it's up here. Okay. Uh, Co-founder of video game arts, nonprofit, EMG Toronto. And okay. So she's also the co-founder of the collaborative studio. Okay. And this dude. Works for baby ghost. Sweet studio. Ghoul sh ghoul school. Okay. I'm just double checking, making sure I'm in. I'm, getting all this information. 
And then Weird Ghost says that they want to remake the industry. Which goes into my description of earlier when he was talking about the, the impact and creating a an artificial demand to make everybody supply it. Whew, this is some heavy topics that I was not expecting to run into on this. Oh, the reason why Sweet Baby Inc. exists to begin with. So they're not only politically aligned, they are quite literally, down to their DNA, the same thing. Sweet Baby Inc., Weird Ghost, Baby Ghost, Infinite Ammo, Gamergate, Alaka Loka, Eileen Haloka, Zoe Quinn, all of it. It's all done and made by the same group of people. Are you convinced yet that video games as a medium have been infiltrated by activists? Or do you need more proof? Well, let's go to the Game Developers Conference. I would actually like receipts, yes. Because this stuff doesn't mean anything if you can't actually back it up. Kim Belair, the founder of Sweet Baby, who, might I add, fits the bill to a T in terms of what Weird Ghost looks for in someone they invest in, was talking on stage about how her vision for her company works to change the game industry as Weird Ghost puts it. So, this clip is from her GDC talk a few years ago, around the time when Sweet Baby was first founded. It's a little bit of a longer clip, however, it's worth watching for context, so let's sit down, get comfortable, and peer into what Sweet Baby Inc. do, shall we? And so I want to put on that, like, very mercenary hat for a second and talk about the way that we decide how we're going to sell the art that we make and how we're going to approach the audiences that we make it for. Because I think so often when people like us get told, you know, from higher ups or from society at large, this isn't what players want, it's not a conversation about demographic, sorry, content, it's a conversation about demographics. And I think that in our industry and in so many creative industries, if you want to look at <laughs> film and television and any art form, we start treating our core demographics as a fixed and static value, something that does not want to change and something that is locked in place. So despite like the changing face of audiences, despite the changing face of conferences like this one, we still look at our core demographics and say, okay, they're white, cis, hetero, males. And we cater almost exclusively to them. And the Because North America is comprised of almost 70 to 80% of that. I'm, I'm including, this is like all of North America. And there's a margin. I'm, that's why I'm going in the broad general of a certain set of percentage. The problem is that we don't just cater to them like, you know, here, here's something that we think you'll enjoy. We cater them the way that we cater to like a picky baby. We feed them the same thing that we know that they love and we keep on feeding it. We're like, here you go. We this goes back to the supply and demand. If 80, if 80 percent. And let's not even assume, like, let's, let's not even assume that it's just white folk, the percentage of white folk in North America is, is that. What, what if it, it's probably less, maybe some, maybe some white folks don't like the things, but maybe like other minority groups also like the thing. Also, you're just, what they're doing is they're just making a broad estimation and be like, all the white folk want this and they're, they're being picky about what they want. Well, they have the money. If you have the money, you should be completely allowed to spend your money how you want to spend it. Now, Grant. I like seeing, I like people with my skin tone in video games. I think it's cool, but I'm not demanding it because the, the, the story is more important and we, and everybody knows how bad like force forsaken was. And even I'm just like, bruh, like this is not a good character. You love it. Eat this, eat this, eat this. So that then when they get anything else, they react as a picky baby would, which is be like, whoa, no, thank you. I and that's not all. That's not always the case. Like there, there are some people that actually do want to see new things. This is just a broad, this is just a broad analogy that just suits her narrative. Do not want this. And we've actually done this so long that what we're doing is creating an entire nation of picky babies and they make us scared to deviate from what we actually want to do. Just in case these picky babies don't want to play our games. And we've made a lot of progress. Obviously, like I don't say this to completely go like, just give up, we've, <laughs> we've screwed it. Um, so I want to do. 
just give up that's weird now if somebody at your local at your local grocery stores acted like this you probably wouldn't go to that grocery store anymore right oh you don't like the prices of our food well get over it enjoy it am i wrong You would, you would go to another restaurant or not a restaurant. You go to another, like, heck, even if, the, even at the grocery, like even at restaurants, like if somebody was just like, well, that's just how we prepare our food. If you don't like it, whatever, you're going to, you're going to enjoy it. Like, that's crazy. Like, bruh, come on. Are you serious? Better than this because, and I like, I don't say that to be like oh you know what i'm going to dismiss all the hate and the abuse in our communities but i do like to imagine that when we what what if you cause it look at uh white guys and there's several of you here um i think that when we look at you we say okay you can't possibly enjoy this but i think they want also and maybe you want also to experience new and different stories i think we need to step out of this rule that like white men can enjoy fantasy We do want more stories, but we also want the experience to be good. Is that, is that weird? See worlds, aliens, sci-fi, monsters, anything. So long as it's through a lens that looks exactly like them, because if that's the. Almost every game that comes out has a custom character creator. And we used to be in, in like the nineties when I, when I was like younger, we used to actually just have a stock character because the st like the first real game that actually had some form of like character customization was Fable. But like all of the stories were centered around a very specific character and sometimes that changed. Like Infamous, the, the series Infamous by Sucker Punch is like one of my favorite games, not because the character is white. If the character was black, who cared? Who would have cared? It's because the story was good. The challenge was great. And you could play. And that was vastly different than any of the games that we play that involved super people being superheroes. The main character in Infamous was a guy, a white guy named Cole McGrath. And that's like if he was if he was black, I wouldn't have cared. But it's like it, but it's just like it's things like this that's just like the contradictory and double standard. Just gets on my nerves. Kind of person that we're always going to cater to, you're never going to innovate. You're never going to change things. You're just going to keep feeding the picky baby. People want a hero's story. Like you can innovate on it and like change aspects of it, but we want the hero's story. That's why that's why it's like Suicide Squad failed, because nobody wants to be this villain. And we cannot continue to try to create art under a system that is going to bar innovation for fear of a picky baby throwing a tantrum. Hey. Okay. Well, I mean, then you can't get mad when those people decide to not want to fund you. You can't call them racist for not supplying what they want then, right? There's like the, there's literally like, hey, these are your actions, all right? And there's for every action, there's a re an e like an equal and opposite reaction that happens. Like sometimes, the the reaction supports it. Sometimes it's supposed to it, right? When you actively make decisions, you create a situation in which. You're going to infuriate, like you're going to enrage a lot of people, right? So if you, if you make the decision that we're not going to make the game that 80% of the community, the greater gaming community will like, then we deserve to not get paid for making it right. This is what happens when you like art, like this is the, the, the topic of that I brought up 
earlier where it's like these this group is trying to artificially create a a demand where there's no supply <clears throat> so if there's no if there's no dem, if there's no actual demand and people are creating a supply everybody loses money and i think this is actually incredibly dangerous for gaming for the gaming community where people are like artificially creating something that they that that the vast majority of the greater gaming community doesn't want maybe we can invite white dudes to play as other people and experience different things through someone else's eyes and if they don't like it we have to start thinking we're not losing they're losing and we're losing because we're going to let them stand in the way of our progress and our innovation. And I think that we need to stop thinking that our like core marketing demographics have to define the exact demographics of our playable characters and of our cast. And what? Marketing. And oh. I think that we need to stop thinking that our like core marketing demographics have to define the exact demographics of our playable characters and of our cast okay but like every like every bit of fantasy is grounded in some form of reality though like you can't make something that's completely out so outside the norm that people can't buy into the the experience does that make sense like the point of fantasy is to immerse yourself in it. And there are aspects in fantasy that can drop that immersion almost completely. This is sort of like a, a, a big, like you're, you're definitely getting more of my thought process into this. So, and, it, and I implore anybody to do this, like watch a video that is talking about a certain topic when they say something pause it and try to refute or give a justification for your reasoning behind why that person why, why you think that person is wrong this will this will help you with your sort of like to help you sort out what your beliefs are and obviously you want to agree when you can agree, but like if there's, but if somebody says something that you don't agree with, you should, you should actually like s sort through your thoughts and actually figure out why you feel that the person is wrong. Try to figure out what the person is trying to say as a means of like, as a form of like, you know, debate or dialogue. Cause if you're, cause if you can't formulate your own thought process you won't be able to like be able to objectively look at something and be like this is right or wrong you know what i mean and instead we start to have to assume that players do want new stories and that if we bring joy to our broad audience it's going to encompass our core audience as well like representation is this abstract idea we're seeing it as but also new stories doesn't mean the same story over and over again until but with new but with different different skin tones like we we've seemingly lost the ability to empathize with with the people that are on screen now and the reason why i i see this is that like we we used to be able to just be like you know if there wasn't gay characters in a story you could be like you could see a couple and be like oh man i wish i had you know a loved one like that or you know i wish i had a you know a man like that in my world in, in my life or something something along those lines like you you can relate to you can relate to it in a way right just like certain certain actions that are like you know what i get that that i mess with that that makes sense like we used to be able to relate with characters and now it's just like, uh, well, now I can't relate to a character unless the character looks like me, acts like me, talks like me, likes the same things I do, likes the same type of people I do. It's just messed up, in my opinion. This 
weird kind of thing that we can paint over what we're currently doing, but if we start having these conversations as facets of narrative, as facets of marketing, as gameplay, as art, I think that we're actually going to be able to move beyond it because when we sequester advocacy into this one series, what we risk is like preaching to the choir and while you guys already know this because you're here, what's old to us can Hey. Sometimes preaching to the choir is a good thing because sometimes people lose sight of the mission. Sometimes you need to remind people that what, you know, we're here to do something like we're here to be better. We're here to help people. We're here to make a better story. Sometimes preaching to the choir is important because sometimes you can lose sight of your ambitions, your goals, your motivations. So when people say, well, don't preach to the choir. Well, you kind of need to. Does that make sense? You become complacent when you're not reminded of your responsibilities. And be innovative to somebody else. So the goal, as you can see, is to reshape the industry to fit their new world image. They view white male players as the devil and want nothing more than to change the landscape to excommunicate and remove them from the industry as well as when it comes to representation. That's a bit heavy handed, but I get what he's saying. You never want to exclude people from the greater gaming community. And it's very bizarre that of all the ways she uses to explain what she hates, she uses the term picky babies. This entire group is creepy with their wording. Weird ghost, baby ghost, sweet baby, picky baby, even some of the other companies they started up like there's ghoul school as well, just very similar terminology being used here. But honestly, it's very fitting as well because up until recently for many of you, these people were exactly that. They were ghosts. You couldn't see them, you couldn't explain exactly what was wrong, but you could definitely feel as if there was a presence lingering around you. Something was wrong with the games you were playing. You couldn't necessarily put your finger on it, but you knew in your soul that there was something at work that you couldn't see that was contorting and transforming the very- It's actually a really great analogy, honestly. Very ...fabric of this medium that you love so much. But if these weirdos are ghosts, then fellas, we've all become Ghostbusters overnight. And it's up to us to find and locate these spectral weirdos wherever we can find them and rid this industry of this rot. But it seems that the rot has already taken hold. And I remember Chris Kindred, who is that narrative designer who openly promotes that they're attached to weird ghosts and all of that, is the very same individual who originally attempted to get the user who made the Steam Curator tool banned off of Steam to begin with. So a progenitor of Sweet Baby and Weird Ghost attempted to strong arm Steam into banning someone they didn't agree with because they exposed them for who they really are. Isn't that just fascinating? But there's something that's been bothering me ever since this all began, which is this one tweet by another person who works at Sweet Baby. I've covered them before, their username on Twitter is Lego Butts. Anyway, they said this and people seem to have glossed <laughs> over it. Lego, Lego Butts said this in regard to the Steam tool and how it collects information. Which, listen, I'm not sure who uses curator lists. My guess is it's people who would never ever buy the games any of us work on, except they do and don't list those particular games here. But there's just nothing preventing this even though it's clearly not what curators are for. Except they do and don't list those particular games here. Huh. So it's very likely that there are still many games out there right now being sold and played that have been involved with Sweet Baby, Ghosts, and whatnot and are not publicly displaying their names or involvement. So, like the ghosts they are, they're still corrupting things without players even knowing to begin with. Now, what could those games be? Sadly, I don't know. Yet anyway, as of the making of this video. But it would be a shame if someone watching this was to run names like Eileen Holoka, Kim Belair, or Chris Kindred through the credits of recent releases to see if their names pop up anywhere. It's just a thought of course, but who knows, maybe something could pop up. But it's become very clear that this make-believe agenda that people like Kindred, Lego, and others swear doesn't exist seems to be a very real thing that absolutely does. And of course, another tweet I've seen circulating is this one showing other companies that are also directly tied to Sweet Baby and Weird Ghosts as well. It's gonna take time to sift through all of these, but there's some very eyebrow-raising names on that list. <clears throat> Black Girl Gamers, yeah, those are the same people who were contracted by Square Enix when they worked on Forspoken. 
Gamer X is a big one too. I'll have to look into that one in a future oh, video. Oh, okay. And then there's okay. Sarkeesian when her name keeps popping up too. And look at that. Infinite Ammo, Weird Ghost, and Game Space. All of these are controlled by Eileen Holoka and Faber as well. There's another name on that list as well, Cozy Comet Games. Where have we seen that before? Oh yeah, they were on the infographic yeah. when Weird Ghost was celebrating all the startup companies they helped fund, and there it is, right there. Cozy Comet Games, as plain as day, so that's another company created by the sweet baby. So how deep does this rabbit hole go? But this is very interesting, my friends. Very interesting indeed. At least it's good that I can say that we're not crazy at all, and actually we were right all along instead. I've had plenty of Reddit threads saying I'm a conspiracy theorist, that I'm this hate-mongering person, but it's very nice indeed to know that I've been right all along. And they can gaslight me, Yellow Flash, and many others all they want, but the truth is that we were right. We aren't crazy, and we aren't lying. And in actuality, it's these groups instead that are the ones who are lying, and they can try to smear our names, but the devil is bathing in the sunlight, my friends. And it's safe to say that they can't hide anymore, because while the devil does try to convince the world it doesn't exist, it looks like the public isn't believing their lies anymore. Finally, I just want to quickly go over the Warner Bros thing, but apparently after Suicide Squad blew up and died, Warner has decided it's going to double down on live service elements instead of rejecting them, and believes their future is not one and done games like Hogwarts Legacy, which mind you, sold over 22 million copies and was the best selling game of 2023. But never mind that, Warner thinks that is not the way to go even though its success proves that that's what people want. Instead, we need more Suicide Squads because that's the future apparently, especially considering how bad it did and nobody wanted it. These people are idiots, dude. But what it means yeah, to me more weird. than anything is that Warner Bros would rather double down on a failed product spearheaded by Sweet Baby than create a profitable product like Hogwarts Legacy, which to our knowledge anyway was not touched by the baby. Well, maybe it was, and Lego Butts outed that to a degree. We don't know yet. I can't wait till the internet discovers more, but it's proving that time and again, as much as they tell us we're crazy and wrong, we keep being proven right. The baby is exposed, the ghosts are no longer invisible, and they're afraid, fellas. And I know I say this a lot, but it's true, and that is that we are absolutely winning. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more in the future, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for being here, keep asking questions, thanks to my patrons, and have a wonderful day. Enjoy some video games today, that's my one and only demand of you. Go play something and have fun, you earned it. I'll see you in the next one. That was definitely a good one. It was a good game. Or not a good game, a good, good showing. Um, If anybody wants to... Give their own takes, watch the video, uh, there's the link.